And we're back. Thanks for joining me again for another Adobe Illustrator tutorial. And this time we're going to be discussing distort and transform. And we're going to be discussing two types. So this is going to be quick, but it's going to give you a, a decent amount of information that you might have to absorb. So don't mind going back and looking at this a few times just to make sure you've got everything down packed. All right, so let's get started. In Adobe Illustrator, you have two options for your distort and transform. You have the options that are under the effect menu, and then you can go to distort and transform. Or you have the options that are under your toolbar menu, which can be found under the width tool. If you click and hold down, you'll see these same options that you found in effect. Now, with using it as the actual tool itself, you're going to learn that effects are not solidified to the object. What they actually do is they create a filter essentially around your object that you can remove and still have the base form of your object. This is something we've discussed in the past. Um, it's something that allows you to keep anything for your original object that you may want to change later and it will still apply that effect to it so that way everything on top just adjusts accordingly. However, if you were to use the tool option, it is destructive. So it will warp and destroy the actual shape of your original uh, object. And again, the effect menu is non-destructive. So unless you expand the object, which essentially once you've placed the filter on it and you go to expand and appearance or object expand or object expand appearance, it will then apply that filter or effect to your object if it's one that can be applied directly to the object. So let's get started. Right now we have this selected and we just have an oval and if we were to go to our effect menu one of the options you'll find in the effect menu under distort and transform is free distort. It'll give you a rectangular box and essentially this box let me select our object effect distort transform and free distort you'll see there's a circle in the middle now this is representing our actual shape that we have on the board. If we were to click any of the angles or corners of the boxes and drag them, you'll notice that it will shift and change our shape according to how we move and alter those corners. So I'm just going to do this real quick. And when I click OK, you'll notice that it's changed. But we still have this circle bounding box. Well, we have our bounding box and then a circle inside. The bounding box is just showing you the areas that can be manipulated to change the size and shape of the actual original object. The inner box or inner shape that you're seeing is the original shape of our object and then the fill is showing you our current object. Now as is if we were to go to our appearance menu and let me bring this down a bit you'll notice there's a free distort here. If I were to take this and drop it in the trash it brings our original shape back. If I were to go back you'll notice it's here again. Now what I could do is if I wanted it to be this exact shape, I would go to Object, Expand Appearance, and now it's this exact shape, meaning I can manipulate the actual anchor points of this new shape. Whereas before, if I were to manipulate an anchor point, it would respond differently because it's a live effect. Okay, So that's how the free distort works. And this is the same thing that it's actually going to do under any of these menu options under Distort and Transform but free distort just allows you to change the bounding box on the actual object so let's go to distort and transform let's go to pucker and bloat and you can always click preview on these to see what it looks like and once you click that let's go to pucker it pinches the middle area the center area of your object whereas bloat will actually push the outside area of your object and right now you're noticing the shapes that we're getting and this is one feature that might be really really good if you're deciding to make pattern prints something like this you can make snowflakes out of these if you wanted to like I could click OK I could copy it change the uh, directional orientation and have something like this but those are just to show you those options so pucker and bloat it's sucking in on pucker and blowing out or enlarging on uh, bloat but it's doing it from the center point. It's making a bulge. So let's try it with a rectangular object. Actually, let's, you know what? Let's do a star. 
take a look at how it affects a star since there are more uh, actual edges on the star than there are in the circle. So we're gonna go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Pucker and Bloat, turn on Preview on, and Bloat it. And then we'll go to Pucker. And you'll notice the difference between the two. So we'll click Cancel there. And then we'll select it again. We'll go down to our next option, which will be Roughen. Now Roughen, essentially what it does is it roughens the edges of your piece and it does it randomly. Now you can do it relative to the shape or relative to the uh, overall bounding box and you can choose for it to be smooth or corner points and the amount of detail uh, that are in the actual rough and shape. So this is relative and this is absolute. Okay. If you were to change the size you'll notice the difference but once you change it to relative it's a bigger difference. So we can change the number of details we can also change it to smooth or corner. But if you zoom in, you'll notice how the edges actually change. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to copy this, bring it to the side, and let's drag these both back over. We're going to zoom in on the edges. And I'm going to change one of them since they're identical now so that you can see the difference between the two. I'm going to click roughen. I'm going to change it to smooth click the preview and as you notice the edges are now rounded instead of jagged and we're gonna click OK and you can see there are no pointy edges anymore whereas over here there were so that's how you would use roughing and we're gonna go back to our original shape and we're gonna go to the next option if we were to use transform and turn on preview you have a few options here you can change the scale of the object live how it's offset from its center point vertical and horizontal you can also rotate the object which then gives it a sort of perspective angle and then you have options for reflection so you can reflect Y reflect X and then it could be random you can scale the effects or you cannot scale the effects. If we had another effect applied to this and we then put the transform effect on top of it, we can choose that no matter what we're doing in terms of the scaling, it will scale whatever is added to it according to the size of the overall object so that it remains in proportion. If we take that off, the size of whatever the filter or effect is that was on there before we applied transform will remain the same no matter what. Okay, And then you can transform objects as well as patterns. And then you can select how many copies you want to make. Okay? Uh, these are different options that you have in the transform menu. It's, it's fairly simple. It's essentially uh, all of your scale and basic movement options that you would use all wrapped into one effect. So we're going to cancel that, bring our shape back, go to effect, distort and transform, and go to tweak. And when you tweak, click the preview button you'll notice it's like warping parts of this actual shape and you can do that for vertical and horizontal absolute and relative like your other shapes as well as whether or not it's going to modify the anchor points or the in and out control points okay and then we can move on to our next option which is twist which is very easy it's like a swirl and you'll notice that it starts to pull almost like a, a whirlpool or a whirlwind towards the center. And we can increase that by larger numbers. And then you'll notice how it takes effect. If we were to go to Distort and Transform and Zigzag, pretty self-explanatory again, and click Preview, you'll notice that we have a zigzag in and out, up and down option. And it's just alternating. And again, you can choose relative or absolute, change the size to larger or smaller, and how many ridges are in each segment. And then you can change it from smooth to corner, just like you did in the other option for roughing. Same concept. Now, if we were to, these are all under the effect menu and distort and transform. Again, these are live effects, which can be expanded if we chose to by going to object and expand appearance or 
they can be manipulated again by clicking in the appearance menu and then going to that specific effect and then changing its options but if you want to do it to do this live on the object and you did not care what the actual result was in terms of whether or not it was going to uh, be a destructive effect you can go under the width tool option and go to warp which will allow you to push and pull various aspects of this and if you were to double click on it you can then change the brush options that you have because essentially these are all going to be brush options and then you can change the width and height of the brush the angle the brush is and the level of intensity you can also use if you have a tablet you can use the pressure to change how strong it's going to be when you're actually pushing or pulling something the level of detail and whether or not you want to simplify the actual uh, curves and uh, straight lines that go into the line segments okay and you can show brush size or not show it live but as far as showing it you can enter like it says below interactively change by holding down the option key I'm on a Mac or the alt key on Windows and that will allow you to change the width and height respective while live on your actual piece so if I were to click cancel and I were to go with my alt key if you look or my option key you will see there's something that comes up a little marker in the cursor window and when I drag while I'm holding that I can then change the actual shape and it will respond differently when I do this and then you can also hold the shift down to constrain proportions while you're doing that and holding the option key so then we're gonna move on to the next point and let's actually get rid of this that we did to the shape and as you can see in the appearance menu nothing actually changes because this is all live on the object if we were to go down to our next tool which is the twirl tool same thing double click you have options intensity twirl rate how fast it's going to twirl in degrees the level of detail simplify all of these things are the same up top now you have twirl options at the bottom you can click OK and you can use that to actually twirl it. You can hold it down and it will twirl on its own. You can sweep it across and it will twirl while it's moving. And you can get different smoky or fluid effects if you were to do this. Again, nothing changes in the appearance menu. And then we go to our next tool, Pucker, which is essentially the same as our Pucker and Bloat options, except we have separate tools for each one. So if we were to pucker here, and you can hold this down, it will pucker according to the point that you're holding at. And then again, you can double click and change your options. Bloating is the same thing except the exact opposite. So we can expand or bloat various areas. And you'll notice that here it bloated outward. Here it bloated inward because of the direction of where this was actually hitting it. If I start from the inside, and I move, it's going to bloat outward. If I start from the outside and I move in, it's going to bloat inward. Same options as before. You double click and you'll get your width, height, angle, intensity, detail, and simplify, as well as your show brush size. Our next is the scallop tool. And each one pretty much shows you what it's going to look like when you touch it. It's really just giving you a waved effect where there's undulations, hills and valleys, so to speak. And then the next option, as you can see, it's similar. Same thing. You can change the actual complexity, detail, and brush effects in the tangent handles, meaning as far as where the handles are going off, how it's actually affecting the next directional point. You can go down to crystalline, to, or I'm sorry, crystallize tool, and you could change that as well. And the first thing that you would do with that, when you click that, you'll notice that it's giving you points that are puckering outward all right and they're they're coming out at sharp points so this is making it look like a crystal structure same thing double click you have all of your options just like you had in your previous scallop tool and then the same thing would apply for your wrinkle tool same thing with the options see so it's very, it's very similar. You just got to play around with the effects and see what works for you. And you may find use for them in your actual objects and your artwork. So 
that was the basic tutorial explanation, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it works for you and helps you out in the future. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next tutorial. Take it easy. Thank you.